1350. Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. This is the John Riston Show. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Let's join the voices of the pack. Jim Brooks and Joe Serby. Along with CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves head coach, John Riston. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Andy Max, John Riston Show. There we go. Just got to pump it up a little bit. Once again, the John Riston Show, ladies and gentlemen, right here, the head coach. Yeah. There you go, see. We, we got to <laughs> <laughs> hear everybody. Everybody's talking about pre-turkey. To, uh, the trip on? to fantasy. Yes, again. exactly. Well, first round playoff game in the books. Victory for the Thunderwolves. Congratulations, John. That'd Thank be you. thrilling. Thank you. It was... Uh, Anytime you get a win in the playoffs in November, you're excited to move on. And uh, we're definitely, uh, went, it, it went that way for us. It went that way uh, the first half. We were ha- very happy the way we played. And, uh, you know, when we kind of just held on, the second half defense played outstanding. Offense, we did what we had to. And uh, special teams were, were pretty damn good. So when, when those things happen, you get a chance to advance in November. Well, at first half, I thought they, well, first quarter, I thought they had the game plan. If anybody's going to knock you off, I thought that was a pretty good game plan. Hold on to the ball, make first downs, use them enough, a lot of time. Trouble is they didn't get any points on that first drive. I think that was crucial for them and uh, that you kind of took advantage of that. Yeah, they converted uh, their first three third downs in that drive, and, and it was like third and six. And our goal was to make sure they weren't third and five or less because that's the way they were the whole year. And so for us to be able to do that, we had to make sure we controlled first down. That was a big deal. Our number was first down to knock them off the chains and be able to do that. And I thought we did a pretty good job of that. But what what was really, really I think a very positive step that our guys tackled very well. We didn't miss tackles and, and were able to come up and rally up and, and make sure there was two or three guys around the ball. It just isn't one guy. It's got to be two or three guys running the ball and we were able to do that. And then uh, you first drive you guys had the ball go down and get the field goal I'm sure you wanted the touchdown but they made a great defensive play on the pass on third down so you settled for the field goal got up three to nothing and then the game changed when you get turnovers they don't turn the ball over all year I think it kind of shocked them you get two turnovers there in the first half but more importantly Joe and I were talking about it not only you got the turnovers but you got touchdowns out of it well, let's go back to that first drive. I think that when we marched down, we had uh, we were able to throw the ball on first down, and we were able to, to move the chains when we needed to move the chains. And obviously on the third down, uh, A.J. left it a little bit behind Jared. Jared almost came up with the catch. But it, you know what was really nice? We were able to get points, as you said. And, and sure enough, three points was going to give us a chance to have a, a chance to go win the ball game. You know? You only want to try to win by one, and that was able to do that. And then the game of the ebbs and flows, as we've always talked about, the five or six plays that always make a difference. Well, uh, Brandon Pear makes a nice interception with a little pressure on him. He drops just right, hits him right on his numbers. He catches it. We make a play, and then we score a touchdown. And when we score a touchdown on that field goal, that gives you a great opportunity to obviously advance a score and move on. And then the next series we come out and we exchange punts and then they we stop them and they try to go deep on us and Laurent Tarkton makes a heck of a play uh, on, on a really a, a cover two look and uh, he th- went back to his running back days and tried to do fancy deal and I think he could have scored right down the sideline but it was funny uh, Morgan Fox he remembered last time he was trying to block he was trying to block air right there as we go about that he was trying to block air on that we we're, were all teasing him and, and but but but, but again, the key was that we were able to convert to touchdowns. And so when that happens, you got a chance to really break the will, break the spirit, and make sure you keep keep domination of doing that. Well, to their credit, they got that late touchdown in the first half. And Joe and I noticed something there, too, and uh, Hunter Hughes, after they did score that quick touchdown on a third and one, you know, we all know Hunter can get upset sometimes on the sidelines and chew his ball club out when they need it. But it seemed like when they came over, he was the one saying, hey, my fault. I had you in a wrong defense. 
keep playing hard. We're going to be all right. And that was, Joe and I both kind of admired that. I said, man, Hunter is owning this. Uh, he owned the play call there. Hunter does that all, all the time. I mean, he takes responsibility when when it's uh, you know, coaching error. And, you know, we're not always going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. And he's been on, on the sidelines a couple times. Hey, I didn't get that in quick enough. Or that was the wrong call. I had the wrong personnel. And he does such a great call of anticipating what the next play is and putting our defense in that. And he's just uh, done a, a really, I, I can't say what a, a great job he's always done with that. And then, you know, you, you hear over the headset, God, I thought it was coming the other way. Uh, I, I didn't put you in the right defense. And, and all of a sudden the guy goes six, five yards untouched, basically. And, and uh, you know, they, they had a little momentum there going into halftime. And then, Joe? Except for that yeah. play. That's as good a yeah. defensive game as I've seen in a long time. Right. Complete start to finish, not just getting a turnover, but returning it, not just and then turning them into touchdowns. Guys coming in, and I, it looked like probably the most cohesive defense, the most fluid defense I've seen in a long time. And and other than that one play, that's why we were like, we took our headsets off at halftime and said, that was pretty everybody's good. okay. Yeah. You know, this is this is okay. Well, uh, I'm glad you guys thought it was okay. Well, we could. I mean, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, it's only half. No, time. Heck, it, it, the, here at the Larry Moe and Curly Show right now, it, <laughs> I, there's only one guy that didn't think we were all right. But you know, it it, it felt like you could breathe a little bit. I, you know, I thought you, you were on. You were. Yeah. You're very honest with us off air when when we just talk, and you were a little bit on edge last week because Indy's. They're, they don't make mistakes, and it's hard to do something against teams that are fundamentally sound. They may not be great, but they're fundamentally sound. So you were a little bit on edge, and and so that translates to us a little bit, and we were kind of watching. But as soon as we saw the, the way the defense played the first half, we were just like, wow. Yeah, I, I, I was uh, um, nervous, you know, going to playoff. You know, it's it's just it's a different tempo. It's just a different attitude. It's just a, uh, you know, that's why they call it the playoffs. <laughs> it's just as different with the intensity that you have to have to be able to be really, really good. And, and I want our guys to be really, really good and enjoy this opportunity. And I, I was really, really nervous about uh, this game that in, in the Indianapolis game and, and what, what they brought to the table and how we matched up with it. I thought the quarterback was an outstanding player all year and, and uh, we're able to get to him a little bit and then you know uh, the number 18 receiver um, yeah. Rose I believe his last name Reese Horn Reese Horn excuse me um, we kind of likened him to a, an, NF, an NBA player where you wow. say you can let him have his and then take everything else away and, and our guys did a great job at de- we needed to identify where he was and because they, they gave some sets away about what, what they wanted to do but the key was taking away the run and when we can control the line of scrimmage like that I thought that offensive line study them they were as good as anybody we, we faced and um, they were solid they were well coached athletic kind of like playoff teams you're gonna hear me yeah. say that about Midwestern you know we're gonna continue to say that but I thought our defensive line really played outstanding in that game well and Reese Horn after the game they bring the players up to the NCAA cool-off period and Reese Horn said hey that secondary is as good as I've ever seen, and they have some dogs. They they had some guys that were ready to get after it. And and when that when the guy catches 11 passes and is the school record, and he pays the secondary a compliment like that, you know that defensive effort was there because that's the highest compliment to me is when a when an yeah. opposing player who's a senior who just set every record in their school's book said, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, they, hat, they yeah. brought it. Yeah, and I and I wasn't quite sure going to that game whether they were going to be able to we were going to be able to get turnovers based on you know the 11 games that they played and um they they were only had five turnovers the whole year and so that that made me nervous and and they weren't going to get a lot of foolish penalties how about we got one holding call finally yeah you know for our defense we finally got one and i thought that was uh i was calling i was going yeah how how about zero penalties in the first half yeah for your Team. That's yeah. a, that shows discipline, yeah. poise, hard hitting, knowing when to say when. It was I, I, we we talked about that because that, that's where the safety's coming up. And, and, you know, the I ball talk, hits the ground, you got to let up a little. I talked to Bill Maskell today from Midwestern. He said that 
that was one of the most impressive scene, things he saw on film was that there were no penalties. He goes, I, that, that's the most disciplined team I've seen all year. And that's a nice compliment. Yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll take it. We haven't always been yeah, that exactly. way. But, but I also think that uh, the, the, these playoff officials will pl- let you play up to a point. And when you got evenly match athletic, I think it's easy for teams to do that. I think sometimes when we, and I don't mean to say this in a bad way, but I think that when you go to RMAC, sometimes the athletic ability shows up and then the penalties and then they, it just doesn't always mesh. Right. Okay? And I think the playoff football is what we're built for and we're excited to be able to continue playing. That was a Lone Star Conference crew. True, right. right. So they, that kind of gives you a little bit going into this week. Right. Maybe what you what what they're used to playing at level wise. Well, Horn got as we mentioned. Get back to him. He got his passes. Uh, looking back at it, maybe one time I remember he ran kind of like a post corner right in front of your bench. That was one of the only times he was really had any separation. They missed him. That was one of those plays you talk about. If they hit that play, maybe things turn out a little bit different for him. Plus, you put enough pressure on the quarterback. And his first look, your coverage was so good downfield, it almost like, oh, man, i got to find somebody else. And he'd look back, and he'd almost panic. And that's when he threw the two picks. It looked like on his second look, one of them over the middle. Should have had another one. Jones dropped that other one yeah. early in the game. He thought, oh, man, I hope that doesn't come back to haunt you. But, but uh, he still hung with it and made those two plays on defense. Well, I, we, we try to take the first option away. And Coach Donnell Liam, he does a great job. And he and Hunter match up the coverage with the fronts. And it's, it's just was really a, a nice tandem of team working together and our, I think our outside linebackers played well. I think Ben, uh, number 40, Ben Esco was outstanding again and then it's nice having Sammy Singleton back and we had Seth Brown back in the mix right. playing a little uh, nickel package and and uh, we were able to get Joe Rosenbrock but we, we, we weren't going to let him beat us deep and so uh, you know you're going to give up a deep ball once in a while but our guys have rallied and done a nice job. We're gaining more confidence as we keep going and those kids have grown since the very first game to where we are now. And and we're going to have to continue to grow in this big gold box that we're in. Well, and the other thing Joe and I talked about throughout the ball game, we thought was a huge factor in the game. We don't know how much yard. I don't know if you break it down that way. How, mon- how many yards gained in the punt game did you have? Because Kuda's punts, putting them kind of short, but he was getting the great bounce. Now we were wondering if that was by design because later on in the game, Horn moved up and Kuda Punted it right over his head, so it was almost like it was we were in sync that way. Plus, their punter kept kicking those line drives right to Duncan, and Duncan turning it back the other way, gaining yardage that way. But do you sit down and chart how many yards gained you got in special teams? You know, I, I think that the, what our number one goal was to try to take Horn away in the return game because he was really outstanding all year, and we needed to take him away. And so, you know, I, I challenge our punt team to be able to one put the ball where he can't return it, and if we do. Uh, kick it to him. We're down there covering. The only time we kicked it to him, uh, he fair caught it. And so we were able to do that. Do I say that was all coaching on where those balls landed? No, but a couple of them we were on right on the sidelines. Those were what we had planned. But the ball bounced in funny directions, and, and we got the best of those bounces. And, you know, I, I was really happy with Tanner. I was really help, happy with uh, what Trace Gray did as our long snapper and our protection has gotten better as we've gone through and but we're getting more confidence in, in, in that unit right now for sure. All right, we are at Andy Max. Still time to get on down here and join us the night before Thanksgiving. We're still gonna eat tonight. We're gonna have a little refreshment too, a little beverage or two. Because you know it's it's the night before Thanksgiving. So we're gonna do that. We hope you join us here. We do it every Wednesday. Yeah we do it's nothing new. We're in shape. But uh, we're taking questions here, 719-671-7574. We've got a few of them lined up here for the coach. I, if I, you've got one, you can add it. I want to ask a question on air. To, okay. To two of our very loyal listeners. Okay. And that's Madison and Abigail Turner. Okay. And uh, I want to ask you guys a question about what is your favorite part of pack football and we will read it on air but right. we, we appreciate your uh, support and you always ask your question and i was going to ask them a question tonight okay oh well, that's that, let's the let's, standards have been set we know what we're going to have plus we've got some giveaways here if you got a question in the house come over grab the hot mic we've got a couple of these uh, national championship footballs to give away as well so if you're in the house and want to get a question to the coach you can do that and win a prize right here this is the john riston show we are at andy Mack on Fox Sports Pueblo. And now the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. 
Pueblo, 13-15. Just inside the right hash mark, it'll be a 42-yard attempt. Jake Ludwig back to snap on the short kicks now this game. Ball's down, kick is on the way, plenty of leg, and it is good. 4-11 to go in the, make it 4-10 as another second goes off the clock. 4-10 to go here in the first quarter. Thunder will strike first, they lead it 3-0. And welcome back to Andy Max, John Riston Show. Playoff edition, second round playoff edition as we get ready for Midwestern State, the Mustangs. And speaking of the Mustangs and CSU Pueblo, congratulations to Ralph Turner last night. Pulling off the big upset, knocking off the Mustangs down there in Wichita Falls. Big win for them, so we congratulate them. So it was, uh, I, uh, I, I I didn't really right realize they were playing Midwestern, you know. <laughs> kind of were a little busy not knowing their schedule, and I uh, looked online today, and I said, "Wow, they beat Midwestern!" Yeah, that was pretty good. And, then, and, and the then, women uh, did it last Friday. Jimmy and the, the Jimmy Turgeon and, and the women's team is off on a great start. I, I'm excited to go watch them play. I, I've been really impressed with Jimmy and his staff, and, and uh, uh, I, I'm excited to see our, our uh, boys and girls basketball team go. And um, I, I, but Ralph goes, well, we set him up for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had the same ex- the same expression, but for a different reason because I was there last week. Yeah. <laughs> and Midwestern was an awfully good looking yeah, basketball they really team good. last week. And I was like, wow. But but Ralph Turner and John, you know, it's perfect. When the shots go in, you're a pretty good coach. Oh. When the plays work, you're a great coach. I I, I like those plays. Yeah. And, you know, I like the plays that work and get everything done that way. And so it's. Uh, you, you know, in coaching, yeah, I think you boil enough spaghetti noodles on the wall, some of them will stick or not. Yeah, yeah. You just, try, you just keep trying until one does. Right, right. Have you ever literally done that? Taking spaghetti noodles and throwing them on a the wall, see what would stick? No, I've just really... Uh, I've done other things on the wall. I know you have, but uh, I've been around you too long. And I... Um, it, the spaghetti noodles uh, is more of a theory than reality to stick it on the wall, but it's it's kind of family night here. It's, it's it nice. Is. I got uh, mo- some of my assistant coaches and their wives and families are here. The Hecklinskis are here and the Shahs are here, and it's it's kind of nice to have everybody here on uh, celebrating uh, football over Thanksgiving uh, weekend. Well. And John, the Serbies are here. The Serbies are here. John, you're not disappointed. The Twins are running around. They're excited. They're listening to the show. They're all giddy. They said, man, they called us out. We got questions. All right, here we go. Abigail's favorite part of pack football is when the boys all hold hands at the beginning of the game. And Madison's favorite part is when the boys do touchdown dances. Woo! Yeah, like there that. you go. All right, okay. good. Okay. I, I, I like that. I didn't know whether they... Uh, uh, <laughs> there's a there's a great question sitting next to us. Where are the players? <laughs> <laughs> the football play. Well, they're sequestered. They're sequestered. It's playoff week. Do you want to come do that on the microphone? When you get a football if you do that. <laughs> All right, come around here. You can come and ask your question. Come up with something good too. There's besides sequestered. that one. Here we go. You got, you got to come over with another yeah, question. Come over to the mic here. Here, you here we go. Is the mic on there, Joe? It is. You got to tell us your name. All right. Here we talk right into. There it. you go. My name is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. And I am a CSU Pueblo alumni. All right. And I'm in town for the holidays. And I just wanted to know where are all the football players? That's who we're talking about. Well, they, they they're should, sequestered. They, they shouldn't be here, I tell you that. They should not be here, but they where are be. they? Well, I uh, I don't really know that. I, my, I have to check my GPS. I got them all right now. But uh, uh, I think a bunch of them went bowling tonight. We got a bowling set up. We had a nice uh, barbecue that was done by the Welties and a bunch of other families in town, the Turners and the um, Darren Smith family and uh, Andrea. Aragon and all those guys helped in and, and, and pitched a little bit and so but we, we had a nice barbecue lunch and then I uh, had something set up at the bowling alley so hopefully they, they went bowling and enjoyed their night and they're at the library studying <laughs> is that the sound like, <laughs> you go. that's what I heard that, that hey, you have that's a follow up that works that's, that's why you asked the yeah. question yeah. is that what it was is that what you were saying well, all right. I didn't want to know if they were partying I wanted to know that they were studying uh, yeah, of that, yeah we, the, you're in their playbook Engrossed. I do have to say there was one position group that was meeting when I was walking out the door. So there is one position group that's meeting. So, so what do your players do tomorrow for Thanksgiving itself? Well, that's a great qu- question, Rachel. What we'll do is uh, 
9 o'clock we'll have meetings, and then 10 o'clock we'll have practice, and then we'll have a little meeting at 11, and then we'll, we'll have a big Thanksgiving dinner provided by uh, our coaches' wives and the families around. And So we're going to have a big Thanksgiving dinner together, and, and the other players that aren't traveling are free to go home, so they're probably going home at that time. And then we're, uh, we're going to get on the road about 3 o'clock and go to Amarillo and spend the night and then have turkey sandwiches for them when, when, when we get to the hotel. But we, we try to, you know, it's tough being away from family and some of these kids come from distance, but we try to make it as uh, feel like home and this is our family here and we try to celebrate that all together. Well, I follow the CSU Thunderwolves on Instagram. All right. And I love seeing all the updates and go Thunderwolves. All right, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Rachel, Rachel gets a great. All right. Commemorative football. You know, I was going to take the headset off and just hand it to Rachel. Yeah, she and I'll just go <laughs> and mingle. She can have mine. Yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you, Rachel. All right. I'm great sure job. Jim and John would rather look at Rachel than Larry, Moe, and Curly. I don't know which one. I know which one he's calling me. So, wait, we have another question. <laughs> Oh, oh, gee, here so, we go. Okay. All right. Uh, wow. Yeah, full disclosure here. Yeah. This, this is my oldest. This is Victoria Servi. Hello. Yeah, I go by Tori, actually. I only go by Victoria if I'm in trouble. Okay. Yeah. Tori, tonight, <laughs> right now. Yeah, tonight's just Tori. Um, Coach, I have a quick question. So I know NCAA has a regulations on how many players you can travel with. And I was just wondering how challenging it is to make the decision, like who goes with you when you travel? Wow, that's great. Again, another great question about the man management of the, the program, management of your team and being able to do that. So you, we're allowed to travel 58. In the years past, we're only able to travel 54. So in theory, you try to get too deep across the board. And then you try to build in your special teams. Who's a, who's a better special team player? Who's a not to take the uh, the third or the fourth and be able to do that? So, like an offense, we have about you know two or three different uh, um, personnel groups where you're playing with three tight ends or two backs and a tight end or two tight ends, and you know sometimes you're playing with three wide outs, and, and so you always want to be able to cover too deep to be able to get that done. Defensively, we, we're a little bit in our personnel is our base package then our nickel package to make sure that we have two so that's kind of how we put it together and then on our special teams um, you, you always want we carry one punter one kicker and one snapper and so uh, that snapper is Jake Ludwig but he's gone down a little bit this season so we've had to develop some other guys but he came back last week versus Indianapolis and so it, it's kind of the pieces of the puzzles and what a piece of the puzzle I said puddles we got you yeah our, <laughs> we know what our rock Yes, it, it rocks my uh, mouth right now. But what I was trying to say is that when I injuries take place and how do you take one guy on and another guy off and then he's coming back to take another guy on, you know, that, that's part of the yo-yo game of being able to do that. We'll travel 61 players to this game and we'll make a decision in warm-ups about which 58 we're going to suit out. So you decide in warm-ups, you know, some of the guys who played in this last game will still get to travel but might not just play. Yeah, for, for example, uh, you know, Cameron McDonald, he got hurt in our, he's been hurt in our last two games and so he, he's going to be one of those guys we'll try to make a game time decision and so uh, if he can't go we'll, we're going to substitute someone else and and that goes the same with uh, um, Aaron Eckhoff who wasn't able to play this week because of a concussion that he got at the Highlands game and so you know we try to manage that all the way through and, and, and you know what's really good about this and about our team is everybody wants to be a part of it and I hope they understand the dilemma you are about who can dress and who doesn't and so you know sometimes Sometimes the people get to hurt feelings you know, about this, but we, we try to say it, it's best for this team, and you got to go create those opportunities to give you a chance to dress. But it, it, it's a tough job of, of trying to manage that. You just don't go, okay, you guys are going, and you got to manage the best situation that puts you in the best uh, chance to go win this ball game. Right. Thanks, Coach. Fantastic. Great, great, great questions. How hard is it great for job. you Saturday to make that call to? A guy that's maybe even played last week, and he's there, and is like, "Sorry, dude." Well, it, it's going to happen. Yeah, and, and they uh, know that. And I, I, you know, I try to give them a heads up beforehand. You know, what's tough is guys. Some guys have traveled 11 weeks with us and are not traveling now or didn't dress out for that home playoff game. And so, 
you know, I, I just tried to be upfront and honest with them. I said, this is the dilemma. This is why you're able to travel throughout the year, and this is the dilemma we're in. And so I think my job is to look them in the eye and make sure they, they understand exactly where I'm coming from versus, well, I didn't know. You know, when they, I don't know, creates a lot of bad feelings. And right. I think that uh, the best way I can do that is be able to look them in the eye and explain what the plan is. All right. Great questions from our audience in the house. We've still got some more questions being texted in. Here's 719-671-7574. That's 719-671-7574. We are here at Andy Max. Good crowd on hand tonight. We've got our appetizers. They're looking yummy. I'm going to dive in here because we've got a four-minute break here. You ready? Oh, wow. Uh, uh, let's dig into they're, those, They're right? cool enough now to where you don't I think we could dive in and get to it. Oh. But come on down and join us here at Andy Max, John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. Cool. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. off the edge here. Here he comes. Barkle now looks right. They force him out and they sack him. Morgan and Fox. <laughs> Record setting sack right there by Morgan Fox of the Thunderwolves eclipsing Darius Allen's record for both career sacks and season sacks. I think in the same sack. So it was quite a quite a double header right there to get it on the same play. But uh, that's why in the press conference after Morgan talked about the sack. Well now Darius will quit texting me. <laughs> <laughs> well I noticed Darius this week on the little social media was showing his plays with his plays this week. He's still you know, he wants to be out there. You know, it's, it's got to be hard when you're, when you're finally done. It's like, man, they're still playing. I want to get out there and still play. <laughs> well, you know, we, had Paul, we had Paul Browning in the booth or down on the sidelines during reports with us, too. It was nice to get his feeling about it. But he's, you can just tell these guys that are just a year removed know what you're going through want to be there. I'll, I'll take him. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure you will. I'll take him. I saw a hashtag defensive in you. Yeah. <laughs> That's, oh, really? Yeah, I, but between Morgan and then, you know, we talk about it every week. You got Darius last year, Morgan this year, and then we just look over the other side. Oh, my. And Josh Croy is just the smother machine. And then there's a the guy that's hurt this year, Sizer. I mean, he's got a chance to be yeah. really, really. I mean, he was decent last year in spot duty as a freshman. Of course, had the uh, knee problem. But, I mean, that guy, he could be better than all of them, John. You ever well, sit back there and think about it? Man, man this is nice. It's a nice problem to have, isn't it, all those guys? Well, it, it, you know, the reality of this, uh, Ian Kelly stepped up, too, this year. And he's done a nice job. And and uh, we, we've we done a, a nice job of being able to attract some quality kids and uh, they're, they're great great people and they do a great job in the classroom and uh, you know and, and they love playing the game and so it makes our job real easy. Does Ian Kelly remind you of a, a young Morgan Fox? Morgan played as a freshman and he wasn't any built anything like he is now. Right. You know Mo Morgan's really young for his age yeah. and so he steadily have, has gotten bigger and stronger and understand but he has that natural ability that you just don't coach. He's got it factor and I really think Ian Kelly if he was a started out with us as a freshman through this thing uh, I think he'd be as good as any one of those but we got him for another year and, and uh, you know the guy who makes it all tick underneath is uh, old Tony Campton yeah, yeah. man oh man the guy he, he just does everything he can and it's funny I pulled him in to watch a couple clips of tape today and he goes uh, yeah I, I, I got you coach I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got you hey you, you know I, I watch your stuff all the time don't you you, you, you know I do that don't you you know like <laughs> yeah yeah i got you tone yeah he, yeah, he, buddy. he has to be the strongest player in the armac oh he, he's, he's pretty oh my goodness be. just pushing people around all right here we get some more questions here will the team fly or go on a bus to texas well we've kind of already answered that but uh they've changed the rules a little bit on you this year the ncaa yeah. they're tight you know they just don't have enough billions to spread around so they're going to uh, tighten things up on you this year. Yeah, we uh, we we have to ride a bus. The Talk about your travel a little bit, just so that people know <laughs> what you're going to go through in the next three days. Well, one, we, we really don't have any control over it, so we're going to embrace it and we're going to honor it and, and can't bitch about it is where I'm at with it. And I didn't end up bitching on uh, Saturday and Sunday night. Or just, yeah, I'm just trying to get this all planned out. But uh, the NCAA rules are not um, when you're within 
the 600 mile radius it used to be five used to be five that you now you have to bus and so you really look at it we're the only team that's bussing that has an over 500 mile or a 400 mile bus trip in these playoffs and so um it, it's these rules are meant for to be back east where all the schools are a little closer so Anyway, my up off my soapbox that we're going to leave tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day to interrupt family meals and family uh, Thanksgiving to be able to get down to Amarillo. So we'll stay at Amarillo uh, Friday night or Thursday night. And then uh, we're, we're supposed to stay at uh, Wichita Falls, and um, there, there's kind of a... Um, the host team, like when Indianapolis had to come here, we had to provide rooms for them. And Rachel Morris did a great job of getting those things all coordinated. Well, as of uh, Saturday night, I had got wind of that um, Midwestern had not locked up rooms for us for a lot of different reasons. I don't know the exact reasons, but they didn't have rooms for us. And so we have to go to Lawton, Oklahoma. We're staying in Lawton, Oklahoma. It's probably a 45-minute to an hour bus ride uh, the morning of the game. And um, so it is what it is. You know, it's treated like we're getting out of town. We're not staying in there. We're coming in, doing our job, then we're leaving. And so that's kind of how we're, we're approaching that thing. Okay, then uh, another part of this question here. What is a typical bill when you take the team to dinner on a road trip? Now, you probably have all these lined out when you go to, I think, of the Shadron trip when you have the uh, country kitchen there all locked up. But what's a typical bill, average-wise, to feed your football team on a night? Well, we, we obviously don't order off the menu. <laughs> so we, we, we try to have a buffet style, and that buffet style can anywhere run from, you know, uh, Twelve fifty at dinner to you know eighteen dollars. It just depends where where you're at, and so you, you per know player. per player. And then you know breakfast sometimes is comped at the hotel and being able to do those things. So you, you talk about fifteen hundred dollars per meal, and um, you're you're talking about trying to be able to provide uh, snacks for them, and you know you got them locked up and they can't go anywhere. You don't want them to go anywhere, and you want to make sure that they're provided with enough fuel so they can go do their job and, and they're, they're, they don't go hungry. And, and it's also one of those things that we don't have training table, and so this is an opportunity for us to feed them properly and, and, and make sure that they are go through a, a nourished meal and be able to go produce the way we want them to go produce. Well, same listener complaining about the broadcast. So you guys take five here. I'll talk about it here. But they like to watch the stream of the home games because they use our audio. Or if they have that. But on the road games, they have to watch the stream with the opposing team's radio voices or wherever they have do it. And our iHeartRadio app isn't quite in sync with that. So they're wanting to know if there's any way, anything we can do about that. Joe, short answer. No. Exactly right. We have no power. We cannot do anything. So you're just going to have to either, I think we actually go a little bit behind the video feed. I think iHeart's a lot, 45-second delay. Some of these streams are like about a 20 to 25. So they get to see the play and then hear how we called it, I guess, is basically what that's they're going to have. But, I mean, yeah, but that's just something we don't yeah, have any control over. But spoiled now in today's yeah. age where you can watch, you know, Netflix on your phone and you can yeah. you, you, you expect the best production. I'll tell you, we watched the Ferris State game yeah, before your great game production. Up, in the, up in the booth and it was snowing sideways, but the production of the Ferris State TV was fantastic and it was good to watch. And I mean, if you're breaking down film, that's good stuff to look at. But uh, going back to the, the, the food thing with you, Coach, you your players eat well. And I think that you have made a concerted effort when you from when you started till now to make sure that that was one of the things that you did was take care of them in that regard. Yeah, I, I didn't want to, you know, part of my budget is, you know, we don't have an endless budget surprise to everybody. But <laughs> what, no? The, really, the majority of my budget goes to travel and feeding our players and making sure they're taken care of. I mean, that's our priority. Um, you know, if I had to make a decision on buying equipment or taking 
taking care of our players. I'm doing it to make sure we take care of our players. You know, a lot of guys don't understand that I have to charge my players $200 for their soft clothing stuff. And that's one of the things that we have to do in Division Two or not Division One, be able to do that. And so those are part of the things that we have to go through and, and to make sure our program's operated at a high level. All right, uh, one final note here. Ken Frannick, listening up in Denver. He's upset because she stole his question. Oh, but, you know, that's the way it goes, Ken. But, but it's if, it, it if, was if a good Ken one. were here, he'd I'd, understand. Yeah, exactly why we took her question. But uh, exactly she, right. So it was a good one. She got the ball as <laughs> yeah, going yeah, she going home. Oh, so. She got the ball. There she is. But it's also his birthday today, so happy birthday, Ken. Happy birthday, uh, Ken. And I hope, hope the wife's hip is on the men. And uh, we got another question here. Joe's got one from, uh, one from Water, Watertown, Iowa. Is that uh, Watertown, South Dakota? Right, excuse me. Right on the Iowa border. Do you have cleats and cold weather gear to adapt to cold weather predicted this weekend? Yes. Uh, you know, we we don't have any other special cleats. We just have our normal cleats. And from my experience, uh, I think if if sometimes you want to go on flat shoes and play that game if, if it's really hard and frozen instead of your cleats on top of it. So we're, we're prepared to do that. Um, we Is do, it artificial turf? Yes. yes. And so we got, I, I don't think it's going to be frozen as, like it 41 is. degrees is yeah. wet. Yeah. So I think it's just going to be rain. And, and uh, But the, I think the key to this thing is that, um, you know, whatever weather we play in, we can't control it. And we got to have a little mental toughness. And that's what I, we try to stress this week is let's control what we can control. And, and it's going to work and have a little mental toughness to us about operating your job at a high level. Okay, we got one more question. We're going to take it on the other side of the break because it deals with Midwestern, and that's what we're going to look at the uh, next segment, our final segment of the John Riston Show this week from Andy Max. Come on out and join us after hours. No Hall of Fame thing tonight. John can stay here for a while and talk to you a little bit. <laughs> you know, the suit, though, last oh, week. The was, suit played. It looked great. It, it did played. look good, and uh, you did a good job there. <laughs> Thanks. I heard through the grapevine. Oh, yeah. I heard you were awesome. All right, John Rissett Show. We are at Andy Max on Fox Sports Pueblo. Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Now gets it back outside. And they're going to run it to the right side. Bernard cuts back in a hurry. Now gets it back outside. Breaks the tackle. Inside the 35. Inside the 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! Bernard McDonald breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage and then putting it into fifth gear in a hurry. One of three touchdowns in the first half for Bernard McDonald in the uh, ball game. And it's a, a great effort by uh, Bernard taking over for Cam. Cam got hurt fourth run of the game. John, tell us about what happened on to, uh, to Cam in that play. Do you get a little video of it? Yeah, you know. He, Somebody give him the business? Oh, I, I don't know if it's as bad as everybody wants it to be. I, I thought that uh, he made a nice run and they tackled around his legs and uh, naturally they kind of rolled on it and twisted it a little bit and uh, that kind of affected the rest of the game for him. Cam said, so. they gatored me. <laughs> it's like wrestling a gator. Yeah. All right. So, hey, I, I, Rachel asked where the players are. I just checked on social media. They're they're in bed. They're doing what they're supposed to. Oh, there it's you quiet. Go. So, you know. Well, Kevin Shriver's a little hurt that you didn't mention his name there because he, he's hurt that I didn't know his, that I don't have his number. I do have your number, Kevin. Joe was supposed to. I let Joe set that one up. So. Well, he hasn't been to the show the last three yeah, weeks. Yeah, so, so, you know. But, Kevin, we know we love you. And. You know, keep South Dakota and Iowa together up there. He's bringing the weather back with him. Yeah, from the it's upper Midwest. He's down with it as it keeps coming here. All right, let's uh, get ready for Midwestern State. Our final question that we have. Um, there, I knocked. That's why it was so hot. I hit the little button there. See? The well, radio, Mr. Out radio out Engineer, why are we so hot, Striker? But uh, the final question from our listeners that have text questions. Who are the playmakers for Midwestern State? Who do we have to watch for? Offensively, from them, who's going to give us trouble? Well, I, I think they're uh, they, they've had to play with two quarterbacks, and uh, they're they're 17 and, and uh, uh, 14 have done a nice job all year long, and, and uh, they're they're really great at uh, running and pass options, and 
and uh, they're, they're really an outstanding uh, group right there. And, and uh, I think uh, 17, the Hutchison, Hutchison. kid, is uh, re really, a, uh, I think, uh, probably a, a better thrower. And then 14, uh, Coward comes in and does a nice job with it. But I really think they're, the number seven or tight end is Derek Lockhart. He's an outstanding, outstanding tight end. I mean, he gets up the field and runs and, and uh, their, their off in, offense line is, again, I just said earlier, they're big, they're physical, and they, they work together. But the best part of what they do off, offensively to me is they get you in a lot of number situations. They get you in all these run-pass options, and they get the numbers. And so this quarterback has to make a lot of decisions, and uh, he's made a lot of great decisions through the year. And, and so, and, and their running back is explosive. He, he's a, a freshman kid out, out of Lubbock, I believe, that I read, and, and uh, he's done a nice job of being able to handle but what makes this team I think really really special is that they, they play hard they play hard from the, the first kickoff to the end end and uh, they they won't be denied it's a, a very 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 well coached team and uh, it's going to be re really off re really really impressive uh, to watch two great teams with great wills to be able to go after it. But their defensively secondary is probably the one of the better secondaries I've seen. All four of them are upperclassmen seniors, and they come back, and uh, the kid uh, linebacker uh, is outstanding. Lottermaker from uh, Austin, Texas. He's a good player, and they're very, very good and explosive in the defensive line. And that, that safety was the Lone Star Conference Player of the Year. Uh, and the, of all the players Bill Maskell mentioned today, that was the only one he mentioned by name of his team. He said, "I, you know, we got a lot of good players here. We got." He goes, "Our safety, though, I think it's Marquis Christian is his right. name. Mm -hmm. He's a player. And, He's and, uh, really good. Yeah, he's, uh, they got him under their chart. They call him the Whip, the Whip Safety." Yeah. So maybe I don't know if that's a good thing these days. Wow. Exactly, I don't but uh, want to go there. <laughs> the uh, thing about this ball club, there's John's, a reason why they call him the Whip because <laughs> if. Yeah, studying them this week. Six come from behind victories on the year. The last three games, they've been behind by more than a, a score. They've been two scores down in each one of these ball games, and they've come back to win each and every one of them. And, I mean, it's just remarkable that nobody can keep them down. They come back from a couple touchdowns down to Eastern New Mexico. Um, even Wilkes' team had them down a couple of touchdowns. They got off the mat, came back and won that ball game, and then the last game against Commerce, they're down by nine with six minutes to go. They don't even have the football. And they make a turnover, big play, get another turnover, touchdown, and they win the ball game. So you, I guess the, the motto or moral of the story is get them down two touchdowns and then score again, get them down three, John. Well, I, that That's would all. be great in theory. <laughs> I, the reality of this thing is that they play every play like it's one of those five or six that make a difference, and that's the difference. Yeah. They found a way to win ball games, and the key is to find a way to win. And uh, the Mustangs from Midwestern are outstanding in, in that category, and they've done absolutely wonderful things when they face adversity. And that's when you show the true character of your team, show the true character of your person, who you are, is through that adversity. And for those guys to be able to do that and respond and make the plays to find a way to win, that's outstanding. And they, they played one heck of a tough schedule. They played, the reason why they were ranked number one in our region is because they played over seven teams that are over 500 or better. Yeah. And uh, they, they had a 6-1 and one record versus those. And that's what made them uh, ability to win 10 games. And yeah, the one loss they had, they avenged. Right. So I guess you can say, hey, we beat everybody on our schedule that we had this year. Right. So, you know, they're a talented team, and they know how to win. That, and you're a talented team, and you don't know how to win. They just call you average. This is a great team. Well, a lot of things, you look at their numbers, some of them might be average. They don't have a quarterback that throws it all over the lot. You know, a lot of touchdown passes. He only has 10 or 12 on the year. The running back's only got 500 yards on the year. But in some ways, that's got to be scary. You're saying, man, they don't have a guy that they really lean on that has a, they don't have a 2,000-yard back. They don't have a 3,000-yard passer. But, man, they win ball games. That's got to be, man, who do we prepare for? I guess you got to prepare, prepare for the whole lot. You don't know who's going to beat you. You know, it, we, it, it's not just one individual. you got to prepare for this whole scheme. And uh, I think we, we got a great plan 
to be able to make sure we match numbers with numbers. But it really boils down to this. It's called the fundamentals of the game of tackling, blocking, and making sure that you keep the ball in front of you. Don't give up big plays. And the last part of that, this is the secret to any formula is you don't beat yourself. See, what happened was Midwestern was down nine points playing Texas Commerce. Texas Commerce was in control of that game. Texas Commerce throws interception. Next play, Midwestern scores. So now it's a ball game. All right. Six minutes left. Come back the next play in offense. Commerce throws a pick six, and you're done. You're absolutely yeah. done at that point. They didn't. Commerce didn't play against one team. They had two turnovers on two plays that resulted in 14 points. And when you play playoff teams and playoff caliber, you just can't do that. You can't be in that category. And, and you've got to play against one team to be very, very successful in any game. It's hard enough to win a ball game. But when you only play, have to play against one team, it gives you a great opportunity to be successful. About 20 seconds here, Joe. Well, just Bill Maskell said that they have not had one unsportsmanlike or personal foul call this entire year. And I was like, yeah. That, that's great. <laughs> that's that's amazing is what it is. Just, I don't know if it's true, but that's what the coach said. Well, John, final thoughts for you going into this ball game, going into this Thanksgiving weekend. A uh, lot of things right in front of you there for the taking, and got to be excited about it. You know, I, I first of all, I want to wish all the Pack family uh, a happy Thanksgiving, and thanks for uh, thanks for all you do. Thanks for all your support. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, uh, my lovely wife and, and my great family, and and all those people that help support me to be able to do what I do. And then I, I got a great coaching staff that does a great job, and I'm thankful for them and their families that let us do what we love to do. And then I, uh, the most thankful I'm, I am is our players. We got special players. We got special kids and you know what this is going to be a special game and this is going to be a special time for us and I think we are all looking forward to going on the road and going yeah. to, going to someone's house and playing one hell of a football game and I, I'm looking forward to this challenge and all I can ask our guys to do is put our head down go to work for 60 minutes and if it's good enough it's good enough and, and that's all I'm going to ask and uh, I really appreciate all the guys that have touched this program and what we've done but these kids are special. These kids are special, and they're going to bring it their all. And I'm just glad we get a chance to go play on Thanksgiving weekend. All right, looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. We'll have the ball game for you. We'll be on the air at 11.30 with the pregame show. We'll be on with the kickoff at 12 noon right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. We've also got the high school state championship ball game for you over on KCSJ. Tony Wright will have that ball game. That's on at 1 o'clock, 12.30 with the pregame show there. And uh, go ahead, John. Hey, it's pretty I just realized this today. Pueblo East is playing Fort Morgan, and they're the Mustangs. CSU Pueblo is playing Midwestern, and they're the Mustangs. How does that set up for the east side of Pueblo, Colorado? I think it's pretty cool. I think there's something there. I really yeah, do. A little synergy. So We're looking karmic. forward to that. Karmic. There you go. We also have Broncos football for you on Sunday. It's the Sunday night special. Monday nights with Tony Wright's all jam-packed sports shows right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. Thanks to all of our listeners who chimed in with their questions tonight, everybody in the house that gave us questions as well. Thanks for the good crowd here, everybody here at Andy Max as well. For my partner, Joe Servi, for the coach, John Riston, for everybody involved with Thunderwolves Athletics, for Tony Wright, our producer and engineer, I'm Jim Brooks. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and we'll talk to you on Saturday. Good night, everybody. Go Pack!